No, he did it. Oh, hey, fourth graders. How are you doing today? I'm Miss Lawson, and I'm so excited to be teaching you guys today. We are going to hop right back in to Lunch Money, one of my favorite books. I hope you've been enjoying your time with Miss Wagers and Miss Sanders. Um, I'm so excited to be back today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started on today's lesson. So we are starting on chapter nine, and I cannot believe all the things that are happening right now in this book. Today, the focus of our lesson is going to be, I can use text evidence and background knowledge to make an inference. So that is why we have three different sections of our chart today. I have my own here. So what we're gonna practice today is using our text evidence our background knowledge or what we already know, and we're using both of those together to make an inference. So making inferences is something that good readers are always doing. We're always making guesses of what's going to come up next in the book. I know I can never stop guessing, and it always feels the best when you guess what's gonna happen before it even happens. So some vocabulary that we are gonna be focusing on today is irrational not thinking clearly or reasonably. And this picture kind of cracks me up because what do you guys think? What's gonna happen if he cuts that branch? He obviously didn't think it through. He's gonna fall right off with that branch. So he is thinking irrationally. He's not thinking clearly of what's gonna happen if he does that. Another word that we're doing today is production. It is the process of making an item out of different materials. If you noticed um, down below, there's a factory, but you know, in this book, Greg doesn't have a factory that he uses to make his books. He's doing it on his own, but he has a process for his production. Two more vocabulary words that we are doing today is imitation. And I didn't put the definition in here because I wanted you to look at that picture and think, those two girls and think, what is imitation? Someone is imitating you. An imitation is when somebody does the same thing as you. And I thought maybe see if you guys could figure that out without us telling you that. The other word is flattery. So flattery is all those guys giving them thumbs up. So they're giving them praise, compliments, or positive attention. So my challenge to you today, guys, is to pick a few of those vocabulary words and write your own sentences and show your teachers later today. And I think that you can do that with imitation, flattery, irrational, or production. Okay, let's go ahead and start chapter nine. Greg lay on his back completely still. Even with one nostril plugged, he picked up the oily scent left over from last night's dust mopping. He watched the second hand of the big wall clock and listened to Mr. Z's deep breaths. It's like, His math teacher was also stretched out on the floor about 10 feet away. And Greg thought, now I'm completely sunk. This guy is gonna ruin me. And then another deeper voice said, yeah, and I deserve it. And Greg knew that second voice was telling the truth. He said, Mr. Z, in a voice so weak, it was hard to hear, Mr. Z said, yes. I'm sorry about the blood stuff. After I saw it made you sick, Mara's right. It was mean, so I'm sorry. Mr. Z was quiet, and then he said, I know, it's irrational. My reaction to that. It's only a liquid and only a word, but seeing it and hearing that word and thinking about it gets me every time. Greg thought a moment, he said, with me, it's snakes. And lying there on the floor, Greg shivered. I don't even like pictures of them. Mr. Z said, ah, yes, pictures. When I was in junior high, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I went to the public library and found a medical textbook. It had pictures. That was the end of my medical career. So it's kind of funny he's saying that he thought he was gonna be a doctor, but he can't even handle any blood. Of crazy. So 
That was the end of my medical career. He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Irrational. Anyway, apology accepted. After a moment, Mr. Z said, what about the other matter? Losing your temper over the little books. Any apologies for that? Greg didn't say anything. Mr. Z said, earlier, when I told you I was delayed in the office, I was looking through your student file and Mara's. You two have quite a history of conflict, and I thought I was going to be the big problem solver. I thought getting you to apologize would be a help for both of you. Greg turned his head to look at Mr. Z, moving a little so the legs of the desk didn't block his view. The teacher had his eyes shut and his face still looked pale. Pale is like really white, so I don't know. Right now I kind of have rosy cheeks, but if I was sick and I got pale, it'd be very white. But you don't understand, Greg said, about my comic books, I mean. I worked all summer. It's like this whole business. I'm trying to start and it'll make tons of money. And at the start of math class, I was thinking Mara would mess it all up. What? You don't think that anymore? Asked Mr. Z. Not really, said Greg. I got a better look at her mini book. She's drawing all her pictures by hand, making her books one at a time. And you're not? No, said Greg. I make one original and then put and then and then print the rest using a copier. Ah, said Mr. Z. Mass production, econo economies of scale, increased profits, and market dominance, right? Greg only understood about half of that, but he said, right. I can make 40 or 50 copies in an hour, and the materials cost around two cents per copy. Then I sell each one for a quarter, and I've got about 20 more comics all planned out. Mr. Z opened his eyes and turned his head to look at Greg. You see that? Talking was good. Helped me understand. So why didn't you just talk to Mara? Greg sh shrugged. Because she's so annoying. Mr. Z's eyes drifted to the blood on Greg's shirt, and he quickly turned his eyes to the ceiling. He said, I've got a theory about why you two keep fighting. You're both very much alike, and you're each too stubborn to make a step towards being friends. Greg wasn't sure what to say to that, and while he was thinking, Mara came back into the room with the principal right behind her. Mrs. Davenport said, my goodness, looks like an emergency room in here. A bleeder and a fainter come face to face. What are the odds of that? If we can patch up the math teacher, he can run the numbers and figure that out. She chuckled. Mrs. Emmett's gone, so I'm your nurse, like it or not. She went to Greg first and handed him a cold pack. Mara tells me you already know what to do with this. Greg nodded and pressed the blue plastic bag against his nose. The principal gave a towel and a cold pack to Mr. Z. Then she pulled a desk closer and lifted his feet onto the, onto the seat. Get the feet above the head. That's first aid for big, strong, swooning victims. Mrs. Davenport chuckled again. Mr. Z did not. The principal said, Greg, I've already called your mother and she'll meet you at home. Mara's mother is coming in about five minutes and she's driving you both. Then she turned to Mara and said, would you go to the girls' room across the hall for me? Wet paper towels. We've got to get Greg cleaned up so that Mr. Zenotopoulos can get up off the floor. Or we could just wait until it gets dark and all the B-L-O-O-D becomes invisible. She chuckled and then said, sorry about the jokes. I'm just relieved this isn't more serious. Then turning back to Mr. Z, she said, and I know all the other teachers will also be relieved when I tell them all about it tomorrow. More chuckles. Greg had never heard Mrs. Davenport make a joke before, had not known such a thing was possible. And lying there on the floor, Greg thought, Mr. Z's gonna be teased by the teachers tomorrow because blood makes him faint, and I'm gonna get teased by the kids because I got a black eye from a girl. Mrs. Davenport used the wet paper towels to clean up Greg's face and then the desk and floors. It was a big mess, and before she was done, Mara had to go back for more supplies. All right, Greg, 
Up you get, slowly, and keep your head steady. Mrs. Davenport helped Greg to his feet and then into a desk. Stay put while Mara waits for her mother out front. I've got to get back to the office. Mr. Zenitopoulos, will you be all right for another few minutes? Or shall I call for an ambulance? I think she's joking again. She's full of jokes today. Oh, Greg could hear her chuckling as she walked away. He looked down at Mr. Z and said, does she always joke around like that with teachers? Because she's not like that with kids. Mr. Z smiled weakly. It didn't seem proper to talk about Mrs. Davenport with a student. So he said, most teachers have a sense of humor, and that includes principals. Greg stared down at his blue and white soccer shirt, now streaked with blood. Greg thought red, white, and blue, very patriotic. He moved the desk so Mr. Z wouldn't be able to see his front. And then he thought of a question. So, Mr. Z, do you wish sometimes that you could have been a doctor, like you said? Or maybe some other job like that? I mean, instead of just being a teacher? Because if you'd been a doctor, you'd probably be really rich by now. Doctors make so much money. You know Ed McMcNamara? His dad's a doctor and they're super rich. Mr. Z did not want to discuss his personal life. He just laughed a little and said, my older brother's a doctor and he's not rich. Really? Greg was surprised. How come? Because he lives in a part of Idaho where they need a good doctor, but there wasn't a lot of money to pay for one. So remember, I like to stop at the beginning of the pages when I see the stop sign because then I can read the focus question and know what I'm looking for the next two pages. So the focus question is on these next two pages, page 93 and 94, um, what inference can we make about Greg? So we're missing the word what. So it's what inference can we make about Greg? Greg said, how come your brother doesn't move to Chicago or Florida or someplace like that? Mr. Z shrugged. We haven't talked much, we haven't talked about it much, but I know he likes where he lives and he likes his work there. He's not rich, but he certainly has enough. And for him, enough is enough. Greg said, well, I guess that's okay for some people, but I want to be really, really rich. I'm going to make millions and millions. Hmm, said Mr. Z. And what's all this money going to be used for? He asked. Money? Greg looked at Mr. Z as if he was an alien. What's all the money for? To buy stuff, to go places, and get whatever I want, and to do anything I want to. That's what the money's for, Mr. Z said. So if you had all the money you wanted, what would you do? Greg shrugged. Anything I want to. Anything I wanted to. I could do anything. Mr. Z nodded. Right, but give me an example. Okay, said Greg. Like the house we live in, my, pa my parents' house, it's not very big. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a basement, playroom, a family room, just a regular house. So if I had enough money, I'd buy a house with something like 10 bedrooms and 15 bathrooms and two swimming pools and this huge entertainment center with a home theater and surround sound and bass boosters and a pool table and air hockey too. Stuff like that. Mr. Z raised his eyebrows. Hmm. Interesting. It was the way Mr. Z said interesting. Something in the tone and the timing. Greg felt a hint of disapproval from the math teacher, and that annoyed him. Greg said, so you're saying that teachers get paid enough and that you don't want more money, right? And you're saying that you don't want a bigger house with fun stuff all over the place and more bedrooms and bathrooms? Is that what you're saying? Mr. Z smiled. I'm not saying anything, but I will tell you something that I call the Xenotopolis toilet theory. Most people can only use one bathroom at a time. So we'll stop there for a second. So remember, when we make inferences, we use this chart. So I'm gonna hopefully move my little video here. So we are gonna, I can use text evidence and background knowledge to make an inference. So 
like mine, I want you to go ahead and make your own on a piece of paper. Um, and we're going to go look back in the text first so that we can make an inference about Greg. So I know that it's going to be on these last two pages. So I think the big things that Greg talked about was, of course, all the things he wanted to do with his money. So he says, well, I guess that's okay for some people right here, but I want to be really, really rich. I'm going to make millions and millions. So I'm probably not going to write that word for word, but I am going to write on mine that Greg wants to be rich. Greg wants to be rich. And now I'm thinking, why does he want to be rich? What does he say? He goes, what's all that money for? What are you going to do? And so Greg goes, okay, he's going to get a better house. He is going to buy a bunch of stuff. So that's what I'm going to put. I'm not going to put all the details because I'm going to use a little bit of summarizing. So I said, Greg wants to be rich so that he can buy lots of stuff. Now I ask you, do you think he needs all that stuff? Like when Mr. Zenitopoulos says, you can only use one bathroom at a time. Does Greg need all those bedrooms and bathrooms? Probably not. So he's gonna buy lots of stuff that he doesn't really need. Okay, I know my handwriting's not the best, but that is what we have. Feel free to pause if you need for text evidence. So we got our text evidence. Now we need to think about what we already know. So what do I know? I know people, there are some people in the world that just always want more. They're never happy with what they have. And I think that's what I'm gonna put down there. There are some people I know, not all people, I know people who always I said, I know people who always want more. So that's what I put on there. I know people who always want more. Now I'm going to make an inference. I'm going to make a connection between those two things I said. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say I think Greg believes, I don't know this, it never said this. That's what makes it an inference. I'm going to write Greg believes that having more is always better. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. I think that's a good one. So that is the inference I made. I used my text, I used what I already knew, and then I made an inference. So if you need to pause the screen so that you can see that, I'm in the screen completely, and you can pause it there. Good job on making an inference today, guys. And now let's go ahead and get to the end of this because I want to see how this chapter ends. After they both laughed a little, the room was quiet for a minute or so. Then Mr. Z said, what I was saying earlier, how you should be flattered. So remember flattery, flattery is giving that thumbs up. You should feel good. You should be flattered that Mara tried to copy you. I wasn't kidding. Ever hear that old saying, imitation? is the sincerest form of flattery. I think that Mara thinks that you are interesting. Greg made a face. No way. You know how teachers can tell which boys the sixth grade girls like? Greg shook his head and he wished Mr. Z would stop talking. He wanted to put his hands over his ears and sing Yankee Doodle. These were things he did not want to know. Mr. Z went on. Girls like the boys that weren't all, that they're always mad at, or shoving, or turning their heads away from, or sticking their tongues out at, never fails. From down the hall, Mrs. Davenport called, Greg, Mrs. Shaw's here. Need any help? Greg called back, no, I'm leave, I'm okay. He jumped up. He wanted to leave before Mr. Z found something else embarrassing to say. Holding the tissues and the cold pack in one hand, 
Greg got his things together. Mr. Z said, could you leave me a copy of your comic book? I'd like to take a better look at it. Greg said, sure, it's still there on the desk with Mara's. You can have it, free. He hurried to the doorway, but then paused and turned back. Listen, Mr. Z, I'm really sorry about making a mess in your room, both times. Mr. C said, aha, a second apology, also accepted. That's two for me. One more apology for Mara, and you'll be all caught up. Greg didn't smile. In his mind, he said, don't count on it. Out loud, he said, well, see you tomorrow. Yes, said Mr. Z, and if I'm still on the floor when you come to class in 22 hours, then Mrs. Davenport should call the ambulance, call an ambulance. As Greg headed for the front door, it was Mr. Z who was chuckling. All right, guys, that was such a good chapter today. And I feel like we learned a lot about Greg. So here is the journal entry for today. What do you learn about Greg and Mr. Z from their conversation in chapter nine? So I want you to look back on page 92, 93, and 94, and think about what do we learn? Thank you so much for coming today, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow.